In this passage from Acts, Luke, for we assume he's the author, describes a series of events that transform what was or is the Jewish festival of Pentecost. This festival is much like our harvest festival service. The events, they changed what was Pentecost into a celebration of Christian faith and the initiation of the Christian church. Here we have the pulling together of all the strands of scripture, the God of the Old Testament, the Mosaic Covenant, the prophets, Jesus the Son of God and the New Covenant and the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit, scripture remains a narrative, told and then forgotten, dead words on a page. But with the Spirit, Scripture becomes the word of life. In that one place, on that day of Pentecost, the person we know as Jesus Christ, the historical Jesus with which we are so familiar, he's revealed to the disciples and to us also. Revealed not only as a man but crucially as spirit. Without the Spirit, Jesus remains a historical figure, viewed in the past tense. But with the Spirit, he is alive, alive and present in our own time. Of course, the disciples should have been aware of the Holy Spirit all along, for they were told often enough by Jesus. In the reading from John, the resurrected Jesus comes among his disciples and breathes the Holy Spirit into them. And here too is a message for us. We should not, cannot separate Christ's resurrection from the events at Pentecost. Both are crystallised by that extraordinary and momentous outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the foundation of our Christian faith, becomes the spiritual cornerstone of that faith and the church that springs from it. Of course, we're not necessarily speaking of the physical church, but of the universal church, the invisible church which grows our faith, which is God-centred and Christ-centred. That's not to say that the physical church is unimportant to our faith, for this too is brought into existence by the creative power of the Holy Spirit. Without the Spirit, church becomes simply an organisation. Mission becomes a hollow, dispensable action. Communion can lose its true meaning. But with the Spirit, the church becomes united, regenerated, a collection of God's people, and as we learn from the Old Testament prophet Joel, a joyful coming together of brothers and sisters in God. The happenings at Pentecost are therefore pivotal to our understanding of all aspects of Christian faith. Acts provide the only reference to the events at Pentecost, but there's certainly no holding back on detail Violent gusts of wind spread throughout the room. Tongues of fire leap up. Languages heard in many different forms. And finally we hear that bold and incisive speech where Peter echoes the prophet Joel, telling the crowds that the Holy Spirit is indeed come. The imagery of wind and fire can be found throughout scripture. And fire particularly in that it's often portrayed as an important aspect of Christ's holiness. John the Baptist speaks of baptism of fire. And fire not only implies God's holy presence, but it also provides an image or metaphor for God's judgment. One of the most familiar non-biblical references to the fire of the Holy Spirit is found in T.S. Eliot's The Four Quartets. In the poem, he tells of a time when the rose and the fire are one. 
the rose sometimes portrayed as the Virgin Mary, but also as God's divine love and mercy, that rose is enfolded by the purging flame. The Holy Spirit is capable of purifying the human soul, but at the same time bringing about love and understanding. Without this seemingly paradoxical spirit at work, we become selfish, self-centred. Our faith can easily unravel, but with the purifying flame of the Holy Spirit, love will prevail. And as we move on to Peter's speech, we hear the fulfilment of Joel's prophecy that the holy fire is an enabling fire where God is no longer contained inside a small group of select people, but is now known in every corner of the world. The spirit is on the move, and the consequences are both dramatic and life-changing. There's no denying that this earth-shattering, high-voltage experience galvanises the direction of disciples into empowered missionaries, able to spread Christianity beyond the Jewish homeland and into the lives of all who hear the message. When we are willing also to hear that message, we too can be galvanised into action, to act out our faith in all the many ways that the Spirit makes available to us. We're all different in that we all bring unique qualities and gifts to the Christian faith. The Holy Spirit rejoices in that diversity, but at the same time brings about unity, total harmony, making us one body in Christ. And the Holy Spirit, he achieves that simply because this is what the Spirit does. Amen.